Testing water. Probably something that we don't do enough as aquarium hobbyists for a few reasons. One, you think that you might not need to do it, or it might be something that's too difficult to do, or you don't have test kits available that you're comfortable using. Well, today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about test kits, share with you my new favorite test kit, and why we need to be using them. Hey fish friends, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Zenzo from Tozawa Tanks. Now in this video, I'm gonna be talking about testing aquarium water. Now, the reason why we wanna test aquarium water is we want to understand what is happening in the fish tank. We wanna know, is it safe for the fish? Do I need to do a water change? Is there anything going on with the water so that we can ensure that our fish are healthy, happy, safe, etc. Now, I think that it's important to not only test the aquarium water that we are that's already in your tank with the fish in there, but also testing the tap water, the well water, whatever water source that you have that you are adding into your aquarium, because that's gonna kind of give you a starting point and understanding about what to expect with your aquarium water. Now I'm gonna try to keep this pretty basic and not get too detailed or scientific-y. I know that's not a word, but I wanna keep it pretty basic for all of you to understand um, that what we're testing for. So basically, when we're testing water, we wanna make sure that there are nothing, there's nothing in the aquarium that's gonna be harmful to the fish. And also some of the water parameters that we have in the aquarium are helpful to the fish. So we wanna make sure that we don't have ammonia in the aquarium because that is harmful, that will kill the fish. We wanna make sure that there's no nitrite in the aquarium, that there's not too many nitrates as an example. Chlorine could also be something that's bad. So these are things that we wanna ensure are not in our aquarium because we wanna keep our fish healthy. Or we wanna keep make sure that they're at a level that's below the risk area so we're not endangering our fish. Now we also wanna to test to see are there things that are not in the water that should be, or is the water at the right level? So for example, you might have a fish that requires a lot of minerals. It might be like an African cichlid or some type of live bear that requires more minerals in their water. Um, and generally we can test for that with hardness. We could also test for something like pH. So understanding the pH level of the aquarium water. So that would be the relative uh, acidity or alkalinity of the water. So is it super on the acidic side, or is it kind of more of a base? Um, and that's also gonna be helpful for understanding our fish behavior and the optimal level for the aquarium. Now I use tap water for all of my aquariums. And I've got a lot of aquariums down here. I use tap water for my salt water, brackish water, and freshwater tanks. Everything from softer, more acidic South American fish to hard water African fish as an example. So I know that I'm starting with a water that's very soft. Here in San Francisco, California in the US, we have soft water here, meaning that there's not a lot of minerals in the water. It's pretty much just plain water with nothing really beneficial in there as far as minerals are concerned. It's also a very high pH because of how it's being treated by the water company, by the municipality, and it's very high in chloramine, which is similar to have chlorine. Now, Knowing that, I know that when I'm adding the aquarium water, the tank, uh, tap water into my aquariums, I've got to immediately treat for chloramine because it can kill the fish, kill all the beneficial bacteria. So when I test my water, I can test for that. I also know that it's a high pH going in. So understanding how to kind of manage that for the fish that I'm keeping. And also understanding that there's nothing really good in there as far as minerals for my fish. So my fish that require more uh, minerals in there as an example, like my African cichlids, my Tanganyikans, my, uh, some of my live bears as an example, obviously my brackish fish, they require those minerals where other fish like my South American fish as an example, don't necessarily need to have those minerals, they don't need to have that high pH, etc. So understanding what's going into my aquarium is very important, but then also once it's all set up, I need to know what the water's like. So after the water's been there for two days, a week, two weeks, and I haven't touched it, just you know, feeding the fish at regular maintenance, I want to understand what's happening in my aquarium, what the pH level is like, what the general hardness is like, um, those kind of things. So how we do that is with test kits. Now the problem with test kits is that it can be a lot of work depending on the kind of test kit that you have. Now some of these test kits are very thorough, 
but they're a lot of work to kind of do and it might not be something that you want to do on a regular basis because it is a lot of work. Now here in my hand I have a master test kit. This is the one that comes from API and in this kit I can test for ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, pH, uh, I guess just those four and then I can also um, get additional ones to test for hardness, etc. So this is a test kit that gives me pretty much the basics of what I need. Um, excluding that hardness that we talked about, which is another which is another couple of bottles that I have to do um, as well. The problem with this is that it's not a very easy process. I have to take these little vials, put the right amount of water in there, which is five milliliters, read the instructions. Sometimes you have to shake the heck out of these bottles because it's been sitting for a couple of months and you have to shake it, add the correct amount of drops and every one is different, let it sit there, then go back and read it. Now, for you know, someone doing it you know, once every couple of weeks with one aquarium, maybe not that big of a deal. With 30 aquariums, that's a lot and it's honestly something that I don't do very often because it's that much work. There's also super fancy water test kits like this one I have from Sarah. This one does everything and this pretty much looks like a, a science kit that you would have in, in class for biology or something where it has all these different chemicals um, and, and tools for me to measure different water parameters. Now, I've had this kit for a couple of years and you can see how often I've used it by how beautiful and clean it is. I've only used this a couple times because it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It's much harder than that other master test kit. You have to go through that same process of adding the water and reading the instructions and adding the right amount of drops, but it is so much work that it's not something that I really want to do on a regular basis. To be honest with you, I'm never breaking this out. There's dust on the outside of this thing because I pretty much never use it. So now we're getting into something that's easy and that's going to be a test strip. Now there's lots of different test strips out there that you can buy at your local fish store, through different uh, online fish retailers, Amazon, etc. This one, and I've tried lots of them over the years and I've been keeping fish for over 20 years now. This one is actually my new favorite. And these are some test strips that uh, are created and uh, uh, developed by Aquarium Co-op. And um, a couple of reasons why I like this. One, I like the easy factor. So I was actually down here a couple of weeks ago and thinking I need to do some water changes. I kind of have this schedule on my brain about how often I need to do water changes. I didn't really feel like doing it. I kind of wanted to do other stuff. I wanted to go to the gym and do something. I was like, ah, do I need to do a water change in these two aquariums? Yes or no? Well, I said, well, why don't I just test it? So got out this little uh, package of test strips, tested the water by just dipping this in there, following the instructions, waiting 60 seconds, reading it and figuring out, oh, I don't need to do a water change. I can wait a couple of days. I can go to the gym and do my thing. So. It was just literally like one minute of, of my time to be able to test the water to determine what's going on in that aquarium and do I need to do anything to change it. Now in this test kit, this is the, um, the multi-test strip, it has nitrite testing, nitrite, nitrate, nitrite, hardness, which those are some of the other ones don't have, um, buffer, pH and chlorine. Now I have chloramine down here in San Francisco. Some of you might be wondering, does chlorine, does the chloramine uh, show up on the chlorine test? And I did some testing, had to talk to, to a Corey from Aquarium Co-op, wanted to make sure, and it does register on here as a chlorine. So because chloramine is chlorine and ammonia bonded, the chlorine still shows up on the test kit. And then there's another test kit here that uh, allows you to test for ammonia. So this, in this little package, there's a hundred of them. In this one, there's 200 of them. So this will last me, you know, probably two or three months with 30 aquariums, which is great. And again, it's very easy for me. If I wanted to test, let's say 10 aquariums, I could open up that package, dip, 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 dip 10 times, set them all down, probably just right on top of the aquarium so I don't mix them up. Wait a minute, minute and a half, go back and read them and I'm done. And then I, that way I'll know what needs to happen versus something like this, where I would have to do each of this one time for every aquarium. So I would have to fill up one vial for nitrate, one vial for nitrate, nitrites, one bottle for uh, ammonia, one vial for pH, 
add the drops, shake the bottles, add the drops, let it sit, go back and read it, empty it out, clean out the vials, go to the next aquarium. It would take me an hour to do what this could take me, you know, five minutes to do. So that's why I really like using test strips. And I'm not, I'm not telling you that you have to buy these. There's lots of different ones out there. And depending where you live, these, these ones may not be available. Um, but I do like these because of everything that they cover. I like the construction and I like that there's 200 of them in there versus like 25 or 100 or something, which is not as convenient for me especially. So anyway, um, I think I covered everything as, about, as, as far as why we want to test for water. Um, I'm not going to get into too much detail about different water parameters, but basically if you're looking into testing your water, you probably have an idea about what you need to be testing for. And this test kit or these test kits do everything that we need and uh, just it's just in a much, much easier package to deal with versus having to, you know, do that other process that I talked about or that other master master test kit, which is, it's way too much work. So anyway, I hope that this video was helpful for you. Um, I'll put some links down below on where you can get these test kits. If you have any questions, comment down below. And I would also love to read in the comments, how often do you test your water? Because to be honest, I've kind of thought like, well, I know what I'm doing. I've been keeping fish for a long time. This one's fine, that one's fine. And that's kind of how I operate. But actually I could have saved my, some time, saved some money, saved some water if I were testing my water because maybe I didn't need to do it as often. Or on the other side, maybe I thought that something was fine and by testing it, I could see that the nitrate level was over hundred and I need to do a water change. So anyway, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.